By default, forms in Framer are quite limited. We have a lack of input fields that we can do. There's not a huge amount of integrations. And in terms of styling, we actually don't have a huge amount of control. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create an absolutely beautiful and fully customized form in Framer without limits. Let's go. So for this project, what we're actually going to do is download Framer Forms. Now, Framer Forms is a great extension and it's essentially just a remix that we can use to create custom and and unlimited forms in Framer. So all I'm gonna do is actually going to copy this uh, quick start that they've got here and I'm going to paste this into my project. And essentially all the magic's done, there's a couple of different code overrides and things that I can do, but because of the way this is set up, I can actually customize this as much as I want. So if I want another input field, I can absolutely do that. I just have to copy and paste that input and I just need to change this to be phone number so I know that it's a phone state. I can change the styling on this. So let's set the title to be phone number and let's change the icon as well to be a phone. Now I wanna take this a little bit step further cause it still looks pretty plain and I actually want to customize this like I would anything else in Framer. So what I'm gonna do is actually select this input styling which is set as a component and I'm going to unlink it so I can actually edit it within this project and we're gonna create something new. So I reckon I'll take this one and I'll set a variant and I wanna do something a little bit different. So what I wanna do is we're gonna make this icon uh, stay there, that looks pretty good, but I want some sort of like drop shadow or something to it, that could be quite nice. So if we select this backgrounds and if we add a shadow and if we make this quite big, maybe something like 60, and we wanna make sure the overflow is set to visible on all our elements. So that's set to visible, so that should be fine. Uh, we also want to change the text on this. So maybe we go something a little bit different. What have we got here? Uh, let's go with the classic Rubik's. We do like that one. Make it a bit bolder and we'll make this, uh, that can be in capitals later on. We'll change the color and I want to make this as round as possible. So we're gonna set the radius to be 999. Now I can go back to my homepage and I can just simply select each uh, input field and I'm gonna change that to my new variant that I've set up. Okay, so it looks like we've got an issue with the overflow. So we're just going to make sure that the overflow is always set to visible. So I imagine it's going to be within this element here that's gonna be the problem. Yep, there we go, great. That uh, gradient still seems to be a little bit strong. So what we'll do is bring that down a bit. So we'll select the shadow. Maybe we try 23. That looks a lot nicer. Uh, we'll change the styling on all the other ones. And message. Great. And again, we just wanna make sure that the overflow is set to visible on all these elements as well. Great. I'm liking the look of this already. Let's preview that and see how it feels. Great, everything animates in and I can put in my inputs. That's super great. Uh, I kind of want some color on these icons. So let's set a color. Let's find a, a deep purple that I want to use. Let's add this as a style so I can reuse it. And let's quickly update all my input fields. Yeah, this looks really cool. And then let's change the styling of this button. So I'm gonna edit this components. Again, I'm gonna unlink and replace all. And we're going to add a new variant on, I like this color inverse one. So let's use that. And let's update it. Whoops. Let's update it. Let's change the background color to be our purple and bring that down a bit. Let's make this text color be that purple as well. And again, just like our input fields, we want that radius to be as high as possible. So now if I go back and if I select the variance, everything's looking super great. So now I can simply type in all my input fields and I have a fully custom form within Framer. 
So if you do want to use this as a template and you want to install Framer Forms, just head to frameforms.com and you can get the uh, template there so you can create cool forms like this. You can also do things like redirect. So if I want to make this form redirect to somewhere after I submit it, it's simply just adding a link to this button. So I can actually go to this submit button here and I can create a link and we're going to send it back to the home page in a new tab. So when I actually click on send message or open in a new tab, and we can also set a condition that someone has to agree to this checkbox here of the terms and conditions. So there's a lot we can actually do in terms of the customization of this form. And this has been really great. We've seen a lot of people sort of like pick this up and use it in their websites. And it's just been like a game changer for them since there's not a huge amount you can do in terms of customizations just yet with forms natively in Framer. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, feel free to consider to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to put out even more Framer content for you awesome people. And make sure to follow me on Twitter too, because I tend to give away a lot of free landing pages and templates on the regular. So make sure to check me out over there. But until then, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week and we'll see you soon.